Hello and welcome to another episode of On Our Terms, a video series by AIA Contract Documents. Today we are going to be discussing filling out the G704-2017, which is the Certificate of Substantial Completion. As always, we are your hosts, Mike Coger and Jimmy Germana. We are both attorneys working at the AIA in the Contract Documents section, and we have the privilege of being joined today by Ben Siegel, who is a manager at the AIA, also in the Contract Documents program, and is the czar of Certificates of Substantial Completion. As always, it's important to remember that this video is not provided as legal advice, and the best thing that you can do if you have Additional questions is seek appropriate legal counsel to discuss the particular facts and circumstances at issue in your case. And with that, I will turn it over to uh, Mr. Koger to talk a little bit about certificates of substantial completion. Mike? All right. Thank you very much, Jimmy. And thank you, Ben, for joining us. Um, so the first thing to talk about with regard to certificates of substantial completion is where the underlying contractual language comes from. Uh, and uh, and no surprise um, with regard to a lot of these forms that we'll talk about in this video series, the underlying contractual obligations come from the A201 2017 general conditions of the contract for construction. Uh, and you'll find uh, all of the substantial completion provisions uh, in section 9.8. So uh, even uh, the very first sentence of section 9.8 is actually the definition for substantial completion, which uh, defines substantial completion as the stage in uh, the progress of the work when the work uh, or a designated portion of the work uh, is sufficiently complete in accordance with the contract documents so that the owner can occupy or utilize the work for its intended use. Um, so then I'm going to ask, we'll just go through this form uh, in a little bit of detail and I'll ask you a handful of questions. Uh, the first question is a bit off topic though. It's probably the most common question you get about um, I guess, completion, which is, do we have a final completion form? Yes, that is a common question, and the answer is no, we do not have a certificate of final completion. We only have uh, this form for substantial completion. We do have some other versions of this form for different types of projects like design, build, and construction management, but we do not have a certificate of final completion. Yep, that's exactly right. And that is a very common question we get, and it all goes back to the underlying contractual obligations of the parties. The architect is required in the A201 and in the B101 owner architect agreement to certify the project as being substantially complete. Different process for final completion. Okay, so let's go a little bit uh, further down in the document, um, going kind of prompt by prompt. One that it seems trips people up a little bit is the big heading contract information in that title or information block at the top. Um, can you talk through what, what are folks supposed to fill out in that contract for and date? What's supposed to, what information is supposed to go there? So that information is for the construction uh, document, meaning the, the owner contractor agreement. Uh, so the contract for would just be simply a brief description of, of that type of project meaning general construction or demolition or other or whatever it happens to be and the date is the date of that agreement so that's that's what that that's what that means and also if you fill out the project information prior to filling out this document in our online system then it will automatically fill out for you exactly so it's not the owner architect agreement it's the owner contractor agreement for the work that's being uh, um, that's being assessed Okay, so let's go on to another fill point, something that might um, cause people a little bit of concern is just immediately to the right, there's not an arrow on it, but that certificate information, it actually says certificate number. Um, some, a lot of folks will think, well, are there really going to be more than one certificate of substantial completion? Um, what do you think about that, Ben? And so the answer is that there could be more than one. And so this is one of the changes that we made to the 2017 form from the, the prior version of this form. And the purpose of that is just to be sequential if there are different parts of the job that are substantially complete at different times. So it could be one and only one, but it could also be sequential like 001, 002, 003, et cetera, et cetera. Exactly. Yeah, I think probably most projects I've ever worked on, there was just one certificate of substantial completion. But you can imagine like a hospital or a 
something else that's kind of done in phases that you might have, you know, three of them. Um, and if, uh, that definition that I probably should have had memorized, but that I obviously read off a piece of paper earlier, um, it said you could designate a portion of the project as substantially complete. So that's, that's just a, a, a little way where you can track those things. Okay, so going down to some of our other um, prompts here, uh, the, the next one um, uh, is, is where you would in, insert what work is actually being designated as substantially complete. If it's the entire project, you just put the address or the name of the project. Um, no real surprises there. The architect needs to sign it and uh, put their, the name of their firm. Um, along with the date of substantial completion. The next fill point that occasionally can throw people off is warranties. Um, I think most people, you know, who've um, been around the construction business industry for a while, they'll understand that warranties, um, or at least their assumption is that all warranties start at the date of substantial completion. Um, is there anything, can you talk through what, you know, any variations to that that might be inserted into the fill point here? So this this full point is basically for exceptions. So if there are exceptions, if there are, uh, again, different parts of the job that are substantially complete at different times, they may have different warranty start dates. So that this full point is intended to capture those those exceptions, and you can put basically whatever you want in that full point to to delineate those exceptions. Yep, absolutely. So um, you if you don't have an exception, you don't fill out anything here. Is that right? Correct. Excellent. Okay, so um, just a little bit of housekeeping here. Uh, I'm only showing the top half of the certificate of essential completion in this on this screen. The next screen is going to show the bottom half of it. It just didn't fit um, all on the screen. Okay, so the next handful of prompts are pretty self-explanatory. There's going to be a list of work to be completed or corrected that would go in that first uh, prompt all the way at the top. Um, and then there would be a, you'd insert the number of days um, within which the contractor has to complete that list, and then a cost estimate of work to be completed or corrected. Um, ben, do you have any, any, I don't know, questions that you get on those fill points? They seem pretty straightforward, but does anybody ever call up and ask about those? It's fairly straightforward. Uh, this is sometimes known as an inspection list or punch list, and so the idea is that uh, there might be other additional items uh, that have not been completed yet, and you're just supposed to attach a list of those items, and that and, and that is the the idea of the inspection list, sometimes colloquially colloquially called a, a punch list. So that's that's the idea there. Perfect. Um, and so getting down a little bit further into the form, the last couple of points here. Um, uh, one that's been highlighted here with an arrow. It's it's got um, responsibilities of the owner and contractor for security and maintenance. Do you ever get any questions about that one? Um, sometimes we we do get get questions about that, and that's basically just saying, well, how how do we fill out this this full point? And it's really just uh, like it says, it's trying to uh, delay who's responsible to, who's responsible. Uh, for those, those items, security, maintenance, heat, et cetera, uh, whether it's the, the owner or the contractor, uh, just to make sure that there are, uh, that everybody understands who is responsible for those various elements on, on the job after substantial completion. Yep, very good point. I think some folks might be a little surprised that this is not, that there's not standard language in the A201 that says, you know, the contractor is responsible for these items. Or the, you know, this it, the way the A201 is set up is that, the owner and the contractor have to agree to these things once substantial completion is reached. Um, and then lastly, uh, both the contractor and the owner have to sign uh, and date the substantial completion uh, certificate. This is something that's prepared by the architect but actually needs to be agreed to by both the contractor and uh, the owner. Um, ben, did I cover everything on uh, the, the common questions that you get on this uh, G704 form? Yes, that's pretty much everything. The only other uh, thing to, to note is that if you were to look at uh, a different version of this document, like, for example, G744, which is the design-build version, you'd have a different set of parties because instead of owner and architect and contractor, you would have a, a design builder. So that's really the only, the only difference is there are some different versions of the form, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, but other than that, the form is uh, functionally the same. Yep, 
Absolutely. Thank you for that. One last thing that I just thought of is that sometimes we get asked, uh, there's a lot of information, as you can see, for one sheet of paper. Um, a lot of folks want to see this certificate all be on one sheet, but once you start filling it out, it oftentimes runs into a second or third even sheets. Um, so we obviously had to do a lot of thinking about formatting with this document when we created it or updated it in 2017. It is very possible to get it all to fit onto one page, but you have to be um, very minimal in the amount of information you put in. You have to reference like exhibits or something for that, for the punch list. Once you start filling it out a little bit and then you hit return and enter, you're going to be deleting into a second page. That's just kind of the nature of what's going on here with the amount of information that's in this document. Um, all right, folks. Well, Ben, thank you very much. Jimmy, do you have a question? Actually, I have a follow-up question. Um, ben, when the contract and the owner are signing this form, is it possible to sign this one electronically? Yes, it is possible to sign any AI document electronically. In the online system, when you finalize a document, it will give you an option of doing a written or digital signature. So this is true, again, not just for this document, but for any document that that has a, a signature area. So what that will do is it will create a separate page. So if you do have it on one page, as Mike was saying, uh, then it will create a second page called the digital signature page where you can insert digital signatures onto that page. Awesome. Excellent. All right. Thank you, guys. Uh, and if you like this video, if you want to see other videos that are similar to this, we've got quite a, a growing list of them about um, terminology in our AIA contracts and also about some of the forms that we have. Uh, please go to our YouTube page um, and like and subscribe to that. We'll, we update these fairly regularly. Uh, you can also go on to our AIAcontracts.org backslash learn page to get more resources, webinars, and other kind of information. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks, Ben. Thank you. Thank you.